Dr. Joshua Brigley from the University of Insubria will talk about the logic and geometry of localic morphisms. Thank you very much to uh, the organizers for um, allowing me to speak at this presentation. Um, the story I want to share with you today is about how we can think about toposes as ways of completing uh, structure. Um, so we might start off with some structure which um, doesn't have all of the properties we want it to have, and toposes are going to give us a way of talking about uh, what structure there should be there and what, what structure we can add. Um, and so in particular, uh, as, as the title says, we'll be looking at um, how we can add structure to uh, some certain logics coming from localic morphisms. So uh, the idea behind uh, the presentation I'm going to show you is that we want to utilize our intuition coming from a propositional setting. So in a propositional setting, we have a localic toposes classifying propositional theories, but we also have uh, localic toposes obviously coming from locales. Um, and so what we want to be able to do is uh, extend this to where we talk in a relative topos theoretic sense about uh, having a localic morphism over a topos and that corresponding to an internal locale. And then on the theory side, we want to be able to talk about what sort of geometric theory we might get out of that. Um, so that's the overall picture. Um, I'm going to uh, give some idea of uh, what's going on with these um, branches of a bridge, and then I'll give a specific case, which ties in very nicely with the logic. Um, so yes, for people who uh, haven't seen the definition before, a localic geometric morphism is a geometric morphism from a topos F to a topos E, such that uh, every object in our domain topos is a subquotient of something in the inverse image of E. Um, so some examples of localic toposes. Um, every inclusion is localic. Uh, that should immediately tell us that um, every topos uh, comes attached with a uh, comes attached with at least one. Um, localic morphism to another one because every uh, topos is an inclusion has an inclusion into a pre sheaf topos. Um, and we can also get lots of uh, examples of, of uh, localic morphisms coming from locales. So when we take sheaves on a locale, um, this obviously gives us a localic topos, but uh, every um, arrow between two localic toposes is also going to be a localic geometric morphism. Um, and we can uh, do the same with um, internal locales and, and do the, exactly the same construction relatively. So here we take the uh, locales internal to a topos and we uh, take uh, sheaves, internal sheaves of these locales and this gives us um, an embedding of the internal locales um, into cotton dick topuses that pre uh, has precisely the same properties that you'd expect from the normal localic setting. And um, every arrow uh, between these uh, localic topuses is going to uh, be localic as well. Although there's a, there's a little caveat to that um, because obviously when we uh, take um, this embedding into here, uh, there comes a choice of the morphism to E. And so it, it, it will be localic up to that, uh, up to that choice of arrow. Um, and, so, and so we also have um, by a result from, uh, I believe, Joao and Tierney, that um, every localic geometric morphism <coughs> is going to be, uh, the, the domain topos is going to be of the form given here, that uh, F is going to be the internal sheaves on the internal locale given by the direct image of a subobject classifier. 
Um, so this result gives us a uh, very nice description of what the internal locales should be corresponding to a localic geometric morphism. Um, and so those, those are some examples of localic geometric morphism. So what, what is an internal locale? Um, for the uh, application I'm going to give at the end, we're only going to be concerned with uh, internal locales of pre-sheaf toposes. So an internal locale of the pre-sheaf topos, where C has finite limits, is going to be a functor from C into uh, the category of locales, such that uh, all of our arrows have a left adjoint satisfying Frobenius reciprocity. This condition is Frobenius reciprocity. And also we have the beck Sheverly condition holding. Um, this, these should be Fs down here. I forgot to change that. Um, so, that so those are internal locales. And so now we can appreciate the uh, arches of the bridge here that um, the, the localic morphism is going to go to the uh, internal locale given by the direct image of a subobject classifier. And similarly, internal locales are going to induce localic morphisms by the projection um, into C. Um, so now I want to uh, move more onto the logic away from uh, internal locales, but we'll, we'll, we'll still see lots of localic uh, properties cropping up. Um, and that is in the uh, idea of a localic expansion of a theory. So a localic expansion is where we uh, take a theory, we take its signature, and we add new relation and function symbols to that signature. And then we take a uh, theory that proves all of the axioms of our previous theory. Um, and now it's a, a theorem due to uh, Caramello in theory sites and topuses that every localic expansion produces a localic morphism between the classifying toposes. Um, and so we can make the observation that uh, every theory in a signature sigma is going to be a localic expansion of the theory of objects for that signature. This is the empty theory in the signature containing uh, just the sorts and the signature of our theory. So no function symbols, no relation symbols, just equality. And so we're going to have that uh, every um, classifying topos is going to be localic over a topos of, uh, over the classifying topos of the theory of objects for its signature. Um, so, the uh, theory of objects uh, is we're going to build a uh, explicit site for it, and it's going to involve the category of relabelings of sorts, which I've denoted as sort subscript sigma. Now, this category has as uh, objects the finite strings of variables in the, uh, in the sorts, and then arrows between these uh, finite strings of variables are going to be relabelings of variables. So that means they are maps that respect sorts. Now, obviously, if sigma is single sorted, then um, a, a finite string of variables is going to correspond to a finite set and any relabeling, uh, because every map is going to respect sorts, is just going to be every map. Um, and so we have the category of relabelings for a single sorted theory is uh, given by fin sets. And so then we can uh, observe, since the classifying topos of the theory of objects uh, in the uh, signature sigma is going to be isomorphic to this pre-sheaf topos, we're going to have that uh, every classifying topos is the topos of sheaves on an internal locale of this pre-sheaf topos. So that's, that's the sort of motivation uh, for what we're going to do next. We've um, seen that uh, whenever we have something that's uh, localic over another topos, we're going to get an internal locale. And here we're going to see that we actually get quite a nice description for the internal locale corresponding to a classifying topos of a theory T. Now, obviously, since every Grottendick topos is a classifying topos of some theory, we're going to have that um, we're able to perform this construction for every topos. 
So let's just review um, our bridge in this restricted context. We have, as the uh, unifying notion, toposes being localic over this pre sheaf topos. And uh, this is going to correspond to uh, uh, two notions. On the one hand, the geometric notion um, of internal locales of this pre sheaf topos. And on the other hand, uh, the notion of uh, geometric theories in a signature sigma. Um, so let's, let's uh, we, we already appreciate what's going on with uh, this bridge, but um, we, we need to sort of understand this bridge as well and how they interact. Um, so yeah, in order to do that, I'm just going to uh, quickly recap some of the stuff from Lefort's lecture uh, earlier. Well, it's not last week. You know, it is last week, it's not this week. So uh, at the end of last week, um, I'm going to recall some of the notions from syntactic sites for a geometric theory. So uh, for a geometric theory T, we can take the syntactic category, which has its objects, the formulae in that context, and the arrows between two formulae in context are going to be provable equivalence classes of formulae theta such that, and then we have these sequence holding. And these sequence, um, as, as Leforg explained, just express the fact that theta is the graph um, of a function. Um, so that's, that's the usual definition of a syntactic category and it's syntactic topology uh, has uh, this um, has a has this description, but a sieve is covering if and only if we have this uh, dis disjunction of uh, existential statements being satisfied. Um, and then it's it's very well known that the classifying topos of the theory T is going to be the sheaves on this site with this topology. Um, and uh, it, it's also going to be important later, um, but we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how we can uh, reconstruct it, that the topology is subcanonical. Um, so that's the syntactic site, but, um, and so it's going to be, uh, the classifying topos is going to be localic over the pre-sheaf topos uh, involving the sorts and the signature. And so we need to describe what the sort of internal locale is going to look like. And for that, uh, I'm going to introduce this notion of uh, substitutive syntactic sites. So here, um, given our geometric theory, we're going to uh, give it an internal locale of the pre sheaf topos. So it's going to be a functor from the uh, opposite of sorts um, to locales. And we're going to associate with uh, every context, every string of variables X, uh, we're going to associate it to the locale given by the formulae in that context ordered by syntactic proof. And whenever we have a relabeling, we're going to send that to uh, the locale with corresponding frame homomorphism given by relabeling under the uh, arrow sigma. So uh, here in this notation, uh, the frame homomorphism corresponding to this locale morphism is going to send uh, formula psi in context y to the formula in context x where we substitute every instance of the variable y by, uh, sorry, every instance of say like yi in this uh, vector y, we're going to uh, substitute for yi sigma of yi, which is now going to be a variable in this context. Um, and, and since we assume all of our contexts to be disjoint, there's uh, no issues with, um, that there's no issues in the order in which we relabel the variables. So this is going to be our associated um, internal locale. How do we know that it's an internal locale? Um, it, it's an internal locale uh, because uh, of, of this pre sheaf topos and the Beck-Chevalier and Frobenius conditions uh, basically 
are saying that um, existential quantification behaves well with substitution. Um, they're, they're quite easy to show. And uh, the second remark I want to make is that the left and right adjoints, oh, I mean, that this, this is a why Beck, Chevalier, and Frobenius hold, is that the, the left and right adjoints of our frame homomorphism are given by existential quantification and universal quantification. So this is the, uh, yeah, and so we uh, have this uh, internal locale and uh, we're now going to take internal sheaves on that. And we're hoping that uh, the internal sheaves are going to be closely related to the classifying topos. And indeed, we're going to see that they are. Um, so yes, when we uh, take the relative construction, when we take the Grottendick construction of this internal locale, um, which uh, if you, you can refer back to Olivia's lectures uh, for the definition of this category. But in this, in this particular instance, we get a very nice description um, that it's going to be objects uh, formulating context and the arrows in this category are going to be uh, relabelings of variables. Um, yeah, so if, we, if we've got a, an arrow between uh, uh, phi in context X and psi in context Y is going to be a relabeling in the other direction such that we uh, have this um, sequent holding in our theory. Um, and then when we take the induced topology, because uh, every internal locale has a uh, induced topology coming with it, we end up uh, with a family of arrows in this, uh, a family of arrows in this um, category being covering if and only if we have, um, we have this sequent holding. And so because this is the description of the Grottendick construction and the induced topology, uh, we have that the sheaves on, the, on this internal locale is going to be equal to the sheaves on this site. And so if we look at this, it looks very much like um, the usual syntactic category, just that we've got, uh, we've got the same objects, but we've got a lot fewer arrows. And uh, sometimes our, our our arrows will be identified. Um, oh, and I, I should also mention that uh, this topology is uh, generated by two species of uh, covering families. And so this, this corresponds to the fact that we've got uh, horizontal and uh, vertical covering data coming in from our relative toposphere. Um, and so, yes, so indeed we end up with uh, this site being a dense sub, uh, sorry, having a dense morphism of sites to the usual uh, syntactic site. Um, and the, the morphism of sites is going to be given by this functor eta, uh, which um, sends a uh, formula in context to itself, and it's going to send a relabeling to this provably functional formula here. Um, so I, I'm claiming that this is a dense morphism of sites. And so if that's the case, then as a corollary, we get that this is a alternative description for the uh, site of a classifying topos of the theory T. Um, so uh, just to recall what a dense morph morphism of sites is, it's a uh, function, uh, sorry, a functor from C to D uh, satisfying these conditions. S is J covering if and only if its image is K covering. Um, for every D, we have a K covering family of morphisms 2D. Um, and whenever we uh, have an arrow between uh, F of C1 and F of C2, um, that uh, you know, it, it might not necessarily come in the image of F, then we want to show that it can be uh, it's it's densely generated by arrows in the image of F. And um, whenever we have uh, two arrows being identified, this is the fourth condition, um, then whenever we have two arrows being identified by F, then there exists a J covering family of arrows, uh, which uh, 
exhibit their equality. Um, and so when we have a dense morphism of sites, then we've got an equivalence of categories. So let's show that eta is indeed a dense morphism of sites. Uh, so the first one is immediate by definition because uh, the, uh, the Grotendick topologies are so similar. Um, the second condition that uh, it has a covering sieve onto uh, every object follows immediately because it's subjective on objects. It's the next two which are less immediate. Um, so let's suppose we have an arrow coming from a provably functional formula in our syntactic category, which might not necessarily just be a relabeling of variables. Um, we're going to consider the diagram here, um, where we uh, take the uh, formula witnessing this uh, provably functional formula. Um, and now we uh, have Due to uh, all of the um, due to all of the sequence that a provably functional formula has to satisfy, we have an arrow going to uh, x phi, and its composite. We can form the composite uh, as Lefort showed us in the previous series of lectures, um, thusly. And now uh, we just need to show that. Um, we need to show that uh, this is uh, coming from our substitutive syntactic site and is dense, and this is also coming from our substitutive syntactic site. Um, but this is immediate uh, at, from all of the extra sequence that provably functional formulae have to satisfy. Uh, so this arrow is covering because we have this sequence holding, and this arrow is uh, um, in the image of eta by the equivalence of uh, these two formulae. Um, and for the final condition, if we've got uh, two relabelings um, such that they eta uh, associates the two of them, then we're going to have that uh, phi proves that sigma of yi is equal to tau yi for each yi uh, in our context. Um, and so now we need to find a, a series of, we need to find a covering family uh, that witnesses this equality. But this comes from uh, this commutative diagram here, where uh, this is the co-equalizer, because of course all of these relabelings go in the opposite direction. This is the co-equalizer um, of these two relabelings. And uh, this is this is the projection. This is the map given by projection from this to the co-equalizer. And we want to show that it's a covering arrow. Um, but the required sequent, namely this, uh, can be proved easily from uh, the fact that uh, since these two arrows up here are identified, that we have this sequent holding for every yi in our context. So we do indeed have a, uh, in conclusion, we do ha indeed have a dense morphism of sites, um, which is uh, nice because now we, we, we have a nice way of talking about what the uh, syntactic site is in terms of a uh, localic morphism. And so just quickly, um, I want to uh, give some uh, verifications of previously known results. Um, so for example, if we've got, uh, the, the, these are results from theory sites and topuses. If we've got T dash being a locality expansion of another theory T, then these are both locality expansions of the, uh, the these are both locality expansions of the empty theory on the sorts of the signature. And so being a localic expansion, um, we end up with a uh, morphism of locales, which we can uh, construct uh, very in a hands-on way. Uh, we get a morphism of locales, which is internal to the pre sheaf topos sorts on sigma intersets. And so because we've got a morphism of internal locales, we end up with a localic morphism. Uh, between the two topuses. And so we, we uh, verify our motivating result 
uh, from earlier. But um, potentially more interestingly, a, a quotient theory T dash of another theory T is going to be a theory in the, yep, this is a definition, is a theory in the same signature um, that proves all of the axioms of T. And now we're able to uh, sort of recognize the um, other uh, headline result from theory sites and topuses, but there's a correspondence between quotient theories and subtopoi. And uh, the, I mean, this, the, the, there's, there's more work uh, going on here than is immediately apparent on the page, but we can uh, appreciate the, uh, where the correspondence is coming from, but subtopoi um, of a classifying topos are going to uh, correspond to inclusions of internal sublocales, um, which in turn are going to correspond to quotient theories. Um, and a, another result, uh, you, uh, which was, I believe, uh, Joyal. Um, well, first of all, it, it appears in Joyal and Tierney, and secondly, uh, Joyal mentioned it at his uh, um, talk at the uh, top of this at IHES, that uh, you can, since we've, uh, since we have that uh, every theory is localic over the, um, this pre sheaf topos here, we can use the fact that every theory is Morita equivalent to the uh, to a theory with a single sort to get that every theory is localic over the uh, object classifier, um, which which is uh, a, a very nice result. That yes, as mentioned, originally appeared in Joao and Tierney. Um, and so finally, I want to you know, go all the way back to the beginning where I mentioned that we can think about topuses as telling us the information that we're missing out. Um, and so we, we had this substitutive syntactic site. Now, where do the, um, the provably functional formulae come in? Uh, they come in when we take a, a syntax, yes, they come in here, where the syntactic category is going to be the full subcategory of the representables in the classifying topos. Um, and then additionally, the syntactic topology is going to be the restriction of the canonical topology. So the way to see this is that uh, because the topology is subcanonical, CT has to be a full subcategory, and indeed it has to have the same objects as the representables. So this is where our extra arrows are being added. They're being added on the topos theoretic level. Um, and yeah, indeed, we could also go the other way. And uh, if, if we didn't know that um, the uh, topology was subcanonical, we could define the syntactic category as being the full subcategory of representables. And then we would have that the uh, induced topology, the syntactic topology, would then have to be subcanonical. Um, and yeah, and then uh, in Olivia's denseness uh, monograph, there's a description of how we can do this uh, in an elementary way. Um, so yeah, thank you for uh, listening. That's my talk up. Thank you very much.